Hey guys, uh, welcome to this year's edition of the NCAA Tournament Bracket Challenge. Now I am aware that I didn't do, well, not that I didn't do, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't record last year when I made mine last year. I had a bunch of things going on that didn't allow me to, to be able to uh, record anything, so yeah, this is this year's bracket. But yeah, yeah, you guys, I I never, I didn't post anything about last year's bracket. And then of course, the only other time I didn't since like 2017, I think, was um, when COVID happened and it canceled everything. So that kind of blew. But I mean, it is what it is. And there were still people who did simulations like on NBA 2K and everything. So that was cool. But it did suck we didn't have an actual tournament because in my opinion as a sports fan this is probably the best time of year i think so late march and early april and i'm more of a football fan than i probably i mean look what i'm wearing i'm more of a football fan than i am a basketball fan but i think this is the best time of year for sports fans and i i played basketball in school so it's weird that that's not even my favorite sport it was at a time but it isn't now I guess that's what I'm saying. I, I've grown to not be as big of a fan, but I still love it. And this is the best time of year for any sports fan. So, so regardless on if I'm putting this on YouTube or not, I still I haven't missed a bracket since probably like I started picking these all the way back in seventh grade. It was around 2014, 15. So I've I've picked brackets ever since then, and I've been playing the online challenges since 17. So. Which was the year before I picked Virginia to win it all, and they got busted. But you guys may actually remember that. I may, I may have a video on this channel where I picked Virginia to go all the way to the championship, and they lost to UMBC, which was probably the biggest upset in, at least in the tournament history. But I wouldn't say that it was in all of college basketball history or college sports for that matter. But enough of me going on and on about the past. Uh, Let's pick this year's bracket. So, yeah, as you guys may have noticed, um, this was – because there – yeah, let's see. Yeah, there's still two play-ins left to be played, but I'm picking this on the Tuesday night after the first two first four games have already been played. Or, that was kind of uh, – that I didn't really need to say it like that. But the first two games of the tournament, or in other words, half of the first four has already been played, the first half which was Southeast Missouri State and Texas A&M Corpus Christi and Pitt and Mississippi State. Now, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to spoil my pick for you guys already. They don't really matter because they don't, they don't count towards the, the bracket challenge points. But I picked Southeast Missouri State to beat Texas A&M Corpus Christi. They won by four. And I picked Pitt in what was a thriller tonight. They did end up winning, but by one. And is on a defensive rebound that won them the game, so I thought that was really interesting. Oh, no, no, I lied. They didn't get the rebound. Mississippi State got two shots up and weren't able to get it in, so that's how they ended up winning tonight. So I find that to be very interesting. Of course, we're going to go in order, starting with the, the number one seeds region, the South region. As I just mentioned, Corpus Christi won in a closer matchup with Southeast Missouri State. And the truth is, neither of these two teams are any good, and – even though I have made the mistake in the past of picking number one overall seed to win in the first round, that was only, I believe, one unlucky time, and it's not going to happen this year. I like Bama. Easily the best team in the sport, probably the most well-rounded team. But they have a lot of drama heading in, so that's probably going to affect them negatively, I would say. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not going to make them lose against Corpus Christi, but... Who knows? I mean, I saw the matchup. Yeah, let's look at this real quick. I saw the matchup. Yeah, it really, it really isn't too bad of a matchup for Corpus Christi, but I just, I, I don't think that really all matters when it comes to playing the best team in the country, who plays in arguably one of the best three in the entire sport. So, but whether whether or not 
all, all of the tangible stuff doesn't really matter yet because, I mean, the 16 C is just not beating a one. It's happened once out of 148 times. I don't think it's going to happen again this year. It could. It could, but I'm not taking a chance on that. Okay, now one that could go either way, Maryland or West Virginia. I've seen a little bit of both of these teams. West Virginia looked really good. Well, I mean, they lost to Kansas second round of the Big 12 tournament, but they, um, I mean, they showed up. They played well, you know. And these guys were actually lower before, and I don't know why, but I feel like they were better off lower. But they play Maryland, who's who has not been playing very well as of late. I don't think they won a single game in the Big Ten tournament, and I think before that they had a three- or four-game losing streak, if I'm correct. I'm not sure, guys. I'm not super literate. I didn't really start paying a whole lot of attention until the conference tournaments. Like, usually that's when the important time to start studying would be. So my thought is it could go either way. But I'm definitely leaning West Virginia because I, I've really liked them for a while now. I've been looking at the bracketology for probably the last month, month and a half. And that whole time I was real big on West Virginia just because of the not only seeding they got, but the matchups they had. And they play in a really battle tested conference where, you know, you gotta shoot and you gotta score points to win. So I think that's really going to help them against a team like Maryland. Next you have San Diego State and Charleston which that has been another popular – another – okay, I said that as if we already went through a bunch of them. You know, okay, this is a really popular upset pick, and I definitely see why. Because, for one, Charleston is tied with two other teams for the best record in college basketball. But they also are a really – they, they, they shoot the three ball really well, and that's kind of what propelled them in their conference tournament against um, against Towson and uh, UNC Wilmington, which were the two games I saw them play before we got to this point. And San Diego State, of course, they didn't have as long of a tournament as Charleston had to to win. I mean, they didn't have to play a bunch of games either, but San Diego State, I think that's just an eight-team tournament, three games they had to play. The point is, none of them were easy. I mean, I saw them play. Um, I saw them play San Jose State and Utah State. Both games were very, very close, and I will say that impresses me more than it worries me about them because that conference is, you know, that that conference I think is very underrated, and um, they got three teams in this year that probably like f is tied for second or third of some sort, when, when we're talking about the mid-major schools, of course, because uh, the Mountain West is a mid-major conference. Not, they're, 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 not an, they're not an SEC or a Big Ten or, or Big 12, which I'd say you're looking, those are probably your top three in terms of college basketball. Pac-12 is good, too. I, I got to give credit where it's due. I, I think I'm trying to give too many, too many conferences credit. There's a top three, I'd say. It'd be the Big 12, the SEC, and the, and the Big 10. Just my opinion. And I think all three of them got the most teams in, too. And that being said, me going away from the point again, I've, I've liked Charleston all year because I, I especially liked them when they were going on that run and they were an 8-9 seed. I mean, clearly they're not they're not in that seed range now. They probably would have had to go undefeated just to have a chance at being in that seed range. Yeah, they lost three games, and they weren't even the best team. They weren't even the top seed in their conference. Hofstra was, and they just beat Rutgers tonight in the NIT. So I guess that goes to show that Charleston, they play some competition. I don't know, San Diego State, they've had some early exits at um, – They've had some early exits that have probably, you know, gotten to them a little bit over the years. And I think that they uh, they want to prove that they can get it done. So I think San Diego State will beat Charleston in this first round matchup. They both match up well with each other too. I mean, San Diego State, I think you'll probably see more defense out of them. And they play a slower pace. But Charleston, they're not super quick, but they're not really athletic either. I mean, that's what you get for those mid-major schools. Of course, they're going to be less, less athletic because 
they don't recruit as much talent as these other schools. I mean, San Diego State, not a big school either, but they're definitely going to recruit better than Charleston. Let's say that. Virginia Furman. Furman is a popular 13 pick to beat Virginia. They're popular to beat Virginia because uh, this thing's squeaking, guys. <laughs> squeaking. But, um, yeah, Furman's popular because they put up a lot of points, and Virginia is mostly defense. Like they're the type of team, they're not putting up more than 60 points a game. Or if they are, it's usually because the team they play is really bad and they can't stop them. Furman, I don't think, is that team. And I think Furman will hang around with Virginia. They will give them some trouble. But I think maybe, maybe. we're looking at probably a, a, a single-digit game here coming down to the end. Probably like maybe a five to seven point type win for Virginia. I like Virginia and mostly for their size, their defense, and their coaching. Because that's that's the coaching of Tony Bennett is very underrated and when it comes to Virginia basketball. So I know I know the last time out they got beat in the first round because uh I don't know I don't remember if they made the tournament last year, but I remember in twenty twenty one when they played Ohio, which if you guys remember, when I because I'm pretty sure I made one in 2021, and you guys saw it, I picked Ohio to beat Virginia, and it was for the same reason that a lot of people like Furman to beat Virginia. I'm not as big on Furman because I think they would have matched up with a team that didn't play def that that doesn't play defense as well as Virginia, like Gonzaga, even though they're really talented too and they have size. Gonzaga, they they score and give up a lot of points. They play a very Big 12 style type of basketball. So that's why I can see them. That's why I could have seen Furman giving them more of a run. Because for a while, Furman was projected at the 14 line playing Gonzaga. And since they went up, that actually, surprisingly, probably hurts them more than it helps them. So yeah, I like Virginia in that matchup. Another possibility for an upset here, and all, all of these matchups will be the 11-6, NC State and Creighton. Now, Creighton's been popular for that, 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 that Brennan, that Colt Brenner kid or whatever his name was. I, I sound pretty illiterate when I say that, but because, again, I don't watch all these teams throughout the year, but, but yeah, Colt Brenner is pretty good from what I've heard, and they have a few other big talented guards Creighton does so that's why a lot a lot of people like Creighton and in fact they don't just like Creighton they like them to possibly go on a run as far as the Elite Eight and then they get stomped by Alabama in the Elite Eight just because you know Alabama's just they're they're on fire and you know they're they've been really good all year so of course Creighton would have no chance with Alabama but here's my thought I know a lot of people have been sleeping on NC State because of the fact that they got blown out by Clemson twice and they beat and they they lost three times at Clemson but got blown out twice so everybody thinks that um NC State's not going to have a chance at winning this game or or well not that they're not going to have a chance but they don't like NC State because of that I think that that might actually fuel NC State because uh there's a reason why they're in and Clemson's playing like Hofstra, or North, North, North Texas, and the, uh, the NIT. That's not exactly who they play, but teams like that, you know. Clemson, there's a reason. And I'm not saying Clemson didn't deserve to be here because I think they got snubbed. But all I've got to say is there's, there's definitely a reason NC State got in and Clemson didn't. Now, I get the Creighton is a completely different animal than, like, North Texas. But, I mean, my thought is that if Clemson could beat a team like Creighton, why not NC State? Now, I, I know that Clemson's not matched up. That's why people aren't looking at it. But uh, I ran this simulator, and uh, it really likes NC State. And I didn't exactly like NC State because, again, everybody talks about how they've been blown out. But it's when you sleep on a team like them because of the way they played earlier in the season, that's exactly where you're going to get burned. And you know what? I like NC State. Because I'm pretty sure the last time Creighton made the big dance, 
they actually went on a bit of a run. And Creighton, you know, is not a blue blood type team to me where they're going to consistently make runs every year. So I think they're due to get upset by somebody. So I'm going to say NC State gets them in the first round. Baylor and UC Santa Barbara. I don't know what some of the crazy experts are thinking with UC Santa Barbara. There was this guy on CBS Sports, I forgot his name, on that network saying that he likes UC Santa Barbara and a bunch of other crazy, like, double-digit teams to win. And, you know, you can never count a team like that out because that's just how it goes. And, you know, when you're playing on a neutral court and some of these games are played in different places, some teams have to travel farther than others and it affects them when it comes to their attrition, you know. Like, more teams are going to be more tired and beat up than others because of how they have to travel. Or, you know, maybe we can even compare it to matchup when it comes to later rounds. Who had to play who? That could become important later on. But I'm just going to say this. Baylor has NBA talent on their roster. And UC Santa Barbara, I saw them play. You know, they're, you know, they're really good. They can put up points. They can shoot. They can even play defense. But, like... I mean, that, that, that's your run-of-the-mill basketball team that ends up here. But I just I don't see them beating Baylor. I don't see it. They're too well-coached. They, they're too talented, too big. There's, there's no way. You're not going to beat Baylor. I don't see it happening. So I like Baylor to advance to the second round. You got Missouri-Utah State. Now, this is an interesting matchup. Although, at first, I thought with how hot Missouri is, they should easily blow blow past Utah State. But as I mentioned, I ran a simulator. And I actually did for all these games. I had to pick a tournament bracket. I will even show you guys at the end of this video what that looks like. And I'll tell you exactly who it liked and kind of the flaws and some of the things that it might actually have accurate when I show you that bracket. But for some reason, it was huge on Utah State. And... I think that I have to trust it a little bit because, I mean, it has it has a database that, you know, has kept track of over 300 different college basketball teams and its entire rosters, you know, and what their strengths and weaknesses are. So I think that I at least have to trust that simulator with, with, with a little bit of my being. Not to say that it's 100% accurate because I bet it's not. And there are going to be things that it gets wrong. But I have to consider that Utah State, well, like I thought before, I thought this was easy win for Missouri. But now I'm starting to think that Utah State could give them a game here. And I, I've went back and forth on this. But you know what? I might be biased here because I'm, I'm a huge Missouri college sports fan. When, when it comes to Missouri athletics, I'm a big fan. I'm going to take them here. And, and I wouldn't exactly say it's just because of bias. But I did see them play in the SEC tournament. I was impressed with how they beat Tennessee and they hung around with Alabama. I mean, it was only in the last few minutes that they got beat by Alabama. And Texas A&M got blown out. So, I think that some credit has to be due there. And they haven't won a tournament game since 2010. So, congratulations to you guys if this happens. that would be your first win since 2010. They also have a first-year head coach in Dennis Gates. So, yeah, that'd be a good way for him to start off his career by winning a, an NCAA tournament game. So now, next, you've got the first 215 matchup we're looking at here, Arizona-Princeton. Now, this is a big thing from last year that I messed up on. Now, I didn't exactly mess up on it because I don't think anybody saw this coming. When St. Peter's beat Kentucky, that murdered everybody's bracket. It killed everybody. It made us dead. It, it took us out of it. Any, anyone who had a perfect bracket, almost nobody was left perfect after that happened. And I could totally get that because, to me, St. Peter's was probably the weakest 15 seed and they were playing a blue blood. So I thought there was no way, no possible way, that St. Peter's was, that a team like St. Peter's would even beat Kentucky, let alone go to the Elite Eight, which they would be the first 15 seed to ever go to the Elite Eight. And I'm not trying to compare Princeton to St. Peter's, but I guess really last year to me, that really can go to show how magical March can be for anybody, for literally anybody. 
UMBC proved it in 2018. St. Peter's proved it last year that they could be the that any 15, well, not any 15 seed, but you could be as low as a 15 seed and just come up one game short of the Final Four. Because that's a big stadium that they play in, NRG. That's where they're going to be playing this year. Point is, a team like that can just be one game away but, again, it, it killed them because they, they made it to the second weekend, but they were all gassed, you know. It's like that's why a lot of teams, once they get to the Sweet 16, that's when talent really starts to win out. Because the magic of the first weekend may not follow to the second. But somehow St. Peter's was able to beat Purdue, so good for them on that one. But I tend to think that most years in, the, in, in these tournaments, Purdue is fraudulent, especially when all they have is a big man. And we'll talk about them later. But for now, instead of me getting off track again, let's focus on the matchup at hand. Arizona-Princeton. Again, me talking about the simulator I used, it really liked Princeton as well. And I I didn't get that because, I mean, to me, Princeton, Princeton, there are a lot of things talent-wise and statistically that they lack in. Their record is not very good for a team that won the Ivy League. I get that they weren't the best team in the Ivy League. Yale was. But that's how it goes. That's the craziness of March. And that almost that would almost make you think a team like them is destined to beat Arizona just because of what happened last year. But I'm going to leave what happened last year and last year. I mean, I'm sure Princeton can keep this closer than everyone's expecting, and that's what my thought is. But I think in terms of how good Arizona is, this is a Final Four caliber team. I thought that about Kentucky last year. And speaking of Kentucky, I actually picked them to be my champion. I changed my mind later on, and I really wanted to pick Kansas. Unfortunately, I was unable to do that, and it costed me because they won it all last year. So that really sucked. But... Yeah, that really sucked last year that Kentucky lost to St. Peter's because nobody saw that coming. But I had to be one of the most upset people because I didn't get to change my pick. I only got to make one bracket, and I had one chance at it. I wasn't able to edit it any time after I made it or anything. So that's why, why I became very regretful of my picks. But um, I wanted to pick Kansas, and um, I still had them going to the championship, so it would have hurt me either way. But, I mean, if I had Kansas winning it all – it would, have, it would have been a lot better off for me if I had Kansas win it all than if I had Kentucky make it and then lose in the first round to St. Peter's, and then I'm, I'm dead my bracket's done. So that kind of blew last year, and I think I just didn't really pay too much. I usually don't pay much attention once my bracket gets busted. And that has actually happened a couple of times in the first round throughout these years I've predicted these tournaments. But enough of me talking. My point is, is I think a team like Arizona is too good to lose to Princeton this early. Not that I don't think Princeton could upset somebody, but to me they're just not that strong. I don't think they're the weakest 15 seed. Well, they might actually be. I might have lied, but like I said, the simulator has to – all the all the data that it stores and all the knowledge it has about 300-plus different college basketball teams, it has to show for something. So that tells me that – Princeton will probably keep this closer, but I don't think they win it. Arizona is just too talented. Okay, Purdue, Texas, I'm not even going to take any time with that. I mean, as like I said earlier, and, and we're going to talk about them, because I think that Purdue is very one-dimensional. All they have is a seven foot four man named Zach Eady from Canada. Not to say that he doesn't account for the team really well and that they do have some pieces around him. But unfortunately, when it comes to playing the big dogs of this uh, this league, they have they're one dimensional and they don't match up very well with any of them. But I mean, to be fair, you're playing Texas. I because my prediction is that they're going to play Texas Southern. They have the worst record out of any team in this tournament, and for who they play, that really will go to show when they play Purdue. I think Purdue might they might Purdue might actually have one of the bigger wins of this entire first round. I don't think they're the strongest one seed. In fact, they might be the weakest. But I think that um, just because of how bad Texas Southern is, if they play Texas Southern, it's not even going to be close. And, the re and again, Texas Southern, because they play really well in the first four. But that's about as far as they'll get in the tournament winning that game and then getting smoked by Purdue. 
So yeah, I, I just I really like Purdue in that particular matchup. And speaking of that, I'm also going to be there on Friday. Which I'm not looking too forward to because I don't think it will be very interesting. But it will be cool getting to see Zach Eady, one of the most one of the most um, one of the um, most interesting players to watch in in this sport. For sure. And I saw a little bit of him in the Big Ten. I realized that, you know, if there are a lot of teams that he played that are like what they are in the Big Ten tournament that are gassed and just really tired, he'll kill a team like that. That's where I think Purdue can really get something done is if they play a lot of teams that are just gassed because of all the just all the wear and tear they've had to take within several days. And that's what's going to help with them being a one seed is that they're not going to have to play anyone too significant until probably the second week of the tournament. Or the second weekend. Sweet 16 onward. But I think they'll be good for at least, at least the first round. I'm not, I'm not spoiling who I'm picking there or anything. But just saying I think Purdue in the first weekend will be all right. There's not going to be too many problems there in terms of, like, their ability to score to stay in games. Next up, Memphis FAU, and that's why I say I can't spoil that because I think that either of these two teams really have a nice shot against Purdue. They both play really – they're both really well-rounded teams for the level of ball that they play, the mid-major level. Like, Memphis is really athletic, and they're coached by a former NBA player and Memphis basketball player and alum. And FAU, on the other hand, is like – they're like Charleston. They have – they're tied for the best record in the – they're tied for the best record in NCAA basketball. And they're they're really good on offense. They shoot well, and they have enough size – stay in games with these bigger teams like Purdue. So this is one of them games I agree with everyone else that it could go either way. And I'm also going to be at that game, so I'm kind of excited for that. I'm trying not to lean just to pick an upset because, you know, that's what I want to see there. And, you know, of course, why wouldn't anyone going to a March Madness event want to see would not want to see an upset? I mean that's kind of the that's kind of the best part of this whole thing is the fact that there's going to be upsets. But even if there is one, there's not going to be a significant one because I don't see Texas Southern or Fairleigh Dickinson keeping up with Purdue despite them being one-dimensional. I'm going to go with Memphis, you know. I know everybody loves I know everybody loves Memphis and I was thinking about going away from them just to kind of pick against the grain because I have the belief that Having 31 wins, even if they're, even if those wins are not against the greatest competition, 31 wins in a season has to show for something, and that's why I didn't really like picking against Charleston. But I also felt like San Diego State had something to prove as well, and they, in my opinion, played not they not only played the stronger schedule, but. I think they showed more prowess in their conference tournament than. Charleston did they just they 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 dragged and struggled their way on through that CAA tournament so that's why I'm not feeling too good about them I might change that later but for now I'm going with Memphis next we look at Duke and Oral Robertson oh lord this has been a game that I cannot decide on because as much as I want to say that Duke should run away with this one easily or they should at least be too good for Oral Roberts because not only are they a blue blood, they've got a first-year head coach who's rallied his guys in the last nine games after it was looking almost bleak that they'd make the tournament. Here they are at a five seed, and they just came off of a win in the ACC tournament. On the other hand, you've got Oral Roberts, who's got – who's uh, who you've got uh, – trying to remember what his name was. He, he's the big guy. His first name's Connor. He's like seven foot five. To me, to me, I see him as posing problems because uh, if you guys don't remember in 2019 when they had um, when they had um, I 
Jeez, I can't even remember this last guy's the last guy's name. He's an NBA player now, New Orleans Pelicans guy. New Orleans Pelicans guy. You know what? Just because I can, I'm gonna look up his name. I just remembered his name, and I didn't even have to look it up to find it out. I was, I, I, I did look something up, but I ended up not finding the results. I, but I just remembered his name was Zion Williamson, the, the, the supposed number one pick in the draft. And he was. He would be a lottery pick for the Pelicans. But, yeah, the number one pick in the draft that year for Duke was Zion Williamson. And I remember that even him alone was not enough to um, – to get Duke through easily. I mean, he was enough in the end for them to win. But they really struggle with UCF. And the thing is, I really, I believe that Oral Roberts, because of that size, poses a huge threat to Duke. And they may even lead for the majority of this game. But for but I... Guys, I want to pick Oral Roberts so badly because I see them going on a run if they win this game. But unfortunately, with how well Duke's been playing and with them being a blue blood, all those factors for me are why Duke's winning this game. I wanted to pick Oral Roberts so badly, but I just I cannot I cannot force myself to do it. As much as I would like to pick them, Duke is moving on to the second round. In Tennessee, Louisiana, let's look at this matchup because see. Now, I feel the opposite way about this one. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to pick Tennessee, actually. Never mind. Okay, see? Louisiana, their defense. Louisiana's defense does not compare to Tennessee. And they played one top 25 team, and if I'm correct, I think they lost. Because if that team, I don't think that team's Drake, but I do remember they played a top 25 team. They didn't get blown out, but... Well, BPI thinks Tennessee's number four. Well, no wonder why they like them so much here. And points a game, Louisiana's the better team. I mean, honestly, this game, I think this could go either way. And my thought is this is probably the most popular 13-4 matchup. Well, not the most pop. I lied. It's not the most popular, but in my mind, this is the best matchup for a 13 seed, even more than Furman, Virginia. And I know that Tennessee has that injury, but the thing is, I did not even like Tennessee before the injury. I mean, you would think they're good enough to get through the first round, but Tennessee always has their – in all sports, they're like that. That's where Tennessee has not been relevant in any sport of any – they've not been relevant in any sports since 1998 when they won the national championship in football, the year after Peyton Manning left. Now, literally the, the entire the entire administration and program – of Tennessee is completely irrelevant. And, like, as much as you would think they should be good enough to win this game, and they are the better team easily, I I got to pick it. I got to pick it, guys. I've got to go with Louisiana. I got to go with the Raging Cajuns. Because to me, I just – on paper, Tennessee should be the team that wins this easily. But I remember the last time I thought they should win easily. Oh, yeah, 2021. Oregon State went on an Elite Eight run. Remember that, guys. The only thing for Louisiana is I don't like their second-round matchup, and that's exactly why. But, but not spoiling anything. We'll look at that later. Kentucky and Providence. This is another interesting 11-6. Because I did it. I, I think I did a uh, – yeah, I, I don't think I did. I told you guys I did. I simulated this matchup, and – because here's the thing, when I did the simulator, I ran it two times, or or I, or it was best two out of three to advance in, in in the simulated bracket. You had to win two out of three times against your opponent because I think that's how you can get the more accurate results by simulating it more times. Because the more times you simulate it, and the more often you get that result, the more reliable that result would be, or that likelihood is, and. It thinks Providence will, for the most part, make this a very close and interesting basketball game. 
because it liked Providence once. It liked Kentucky in the end, but it did not like Kentucky big ever. It was all one possession. And this is going to have to be a game where Kentucky rips it out. And last year, that killed them. That absolutely killed them that they had to do that because as talented as they were, St. Peter's was just they, – they were they were not – Something was up with that team. They must have been they must have been baptized with holy water or something the night before that game because I swear, they they did not miss anything. They made all their free throws. They were hitting threes like they were nothing. I couldn't believe that. You know, weirdly enough, coming into this, I thought about that for a second. I don't want to go too crazy. I like Kentucky here. I was th- I was about to go with Providence because of what I said. I because I that just that was something I kind of just thought of on the spot there. Like you know, Kentucky they were in the same position last year, and Providence poses a threat to them. So you know, and I like Ed Cooley. The guy the guy's been in this position as well. Ed Cooley has been in this position as well, and I've liked Providence in previous tournaments, but I just don't like them here because. Kentucky is a blue blood, and they're probably mad from last year, and they're here to show everybody that you know the same thing ain't gonna happen again. So I like Kentucky over Providence, Kansas State, Montana. I talked about this earlier, or amongst myself, I talked about this earlier. Montana State's weak because I saw Eastern Washington in the NIT earlier. They should they should have been in this tournament. Although they might have been lower seeded than Montana State. Montana State is weak. They don't score. Their defense is all right, but they haven't played the type of talent like Kansas State where all they do is score in the Big 12. As much as I could see Kansas State, because I think they're a weaker three seed, as much as I could see a team like them getting upset in the first round, I don't think Montana State is a team that would do it. So I like Kansas State there. That didn't take me long at all. Michigan State, USC. Another game that kind of takes some thought. Because, yeah, there will usually be a 10-7 upset somewhere. I had a chance to pick one in the south bracket, but I didn't. Maybe out of bias, but I think that, you know, Missouri to me also looked, I don't know, to me they look too on fire right now to lose to a team like Utah State. And I'll say they aren't either. Even though they lost the Mountain West Conference Tournament, I still think that Utah State will pose a challenge to Missouri. But I just think they're too much in the end. Michigan State, what I like about them the most, Tom Izzo, of course. That's one guy you don't want to play in March. E- even as a low seed like they are now, you don't want to play them. There have been years where they weren't very intimidating and they still were able to win tournament games because that's just that's the way of the Izzo and the way of March, you know, for Michigan State. But they also have some really good shooters, too, and Joey Hauser and Malik Hills and all that. I don't know if Malik Hills is on Michigan State, but I know that whoever he plays for, he's a good shooter. Again, I, a lot of this is from hearing people on ESPN and CBS Sports Talk. But I've done some simulations, too. These guys can really hit threes and, you know, play in very, very intense moments of the game, like three, two, three minutes left in a game, and it's within three or four points or whatever. These guys can hit threes under pressure, so. That's why I just I like their abilities. I don't know much about USC, but I did see them get their their behind spanked by Arizona State in the first round of the Pac-12 tournament. So just for that, I like Michigan State. But Michigan State went out early in the Big Ten tournament, so I'm not too certain about them either in terms of hotness. But neither of these teams are really hot. So, I mean, you just got to like Michigan State's draw because of the position they're in. They're better than USC, so I think they should be able to win that game. Now Marquette, Vermont. Let's talk about last year's tournament. You want to know something delusional? I picked Vermont to go to the Final Four, and the team I had them losing to was 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 Kentucky. Was Kentucky. I had them losing to the Wildcats, who didn't even make it through the first round. And I, I thought Vermont was going to be the team that beat Kentucky. Well, I didn't think that Vermont was going to beat Kentucky. But I thought Vermont was going to be like the team who beat Kentucky St. Peter's. I thought they were the Cinderella-type team. Because they would have been the first 13 seed to have ever went to the Final Four. And the reason I liked Vermont 
was because of their de- was because of their yeah well I was just gonna say defense yeah defense was something I really liked about them but I mean out of the opponents they played they spanked everybody I know they didn't play anybody but they did what you're supposed to do when you're a good basketball team and that's exactly why I I like them and the thing is they they got a tough draw with Arkansas but I still like them because of what they showed me in the conference tournament. And the thing is, they were this close. And I personally believe that if they did beat Arkansas, because they would have got New Mexico State in the second round, I think New Mexico State just got a good draw with UConn, and I think they played UConn in the tournament before. So they were just a team knocking on the door for a couple of years. I don't think they have. I don't think they were as strong as Vermont was. So I think Vermont is in the Sweet 16, and Gonzaga ended up getting upset by Arkansas. I personally believe Vermont could have upset them. Although, anyone looking through my through that camera right now, watching watching me make this video, would probably tell me, you know, well, Gonzaga is the best team, or they're one of the best teams in the country. You know, they just won the, or they just were in the national championship last year. How are they going to lose to a team like Vermont, who's a mid major and has nobody except for like maybe one guy who's like seven foot? Yep, that's exactly how these tournaments are. You never know how they can go. And St. Peter's just proved last year why that could have happened. But it just wasn't my lucky year for that to happen. So I definitely get that, you know. Like, it's one of them things that in these games it can come down to the last seconds, and that's kind of what happened with Vermont in their first-round matchup. They should have beat Arkansas, but, hey, I'm not going to get too upset or frustrated with it. You know, that's in the past, and. Vermont's back in it this year. You're playing number two Marquette. Now I've noticed that there's been a lot of love for this Marquette team. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think that the Big East is they're frauds. They're frauds. The Big East are frauds, and I think that Marquette is definitely the weakest two seed. As much as everyone's, uh, in fact, I've noticed that there's been so much love for Marquette that I don't think I've seen anyone pick them to finish worse than in the Elite Eight. My thought on Mar- <laughs> my thought on Marquette is that you know they're so fraudulent they might get beat early like they might get beat as soon as this. And let's see opponent points per game. I mean, I get this stat isn't going to mean as much because again the 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 competition they had throughout the season. Look at Vermont they struggled. I mean the only thing that I'll say is going for Vermont really well now is that. They've been on a tear. I think they've won the last 13 or 14 games because I, I remember they were just barely under or above 500. It's somewhere between 12 and 14 games they've won straight. No, it doesn't really matter because they haven't played anybody. Yeah, going to this, yeah, no top 25, BPI, Marquette 13th. But, yeah, see, it thinks that Marquette is weak compared to the other two seeds because, I mean, they're 13th. Like, if that was realistic, they'd be more like a four or a five. They wouldn't be a – or no, that'd be four, not five. But that they'd be more like a four, not a two. Points per game, obviously Marquette scores more. But Vermont's not too far behind him with 73. And, again, I know competition's a big factor in why that doesn't mean so much. But I, I think people are too high on this Vermont – or not – I'm probably the one high on Vermont – but no, I think everyone's too high on this Marquette team just because it's coached by Shaka Smart. And they really like Brian Kolick, you know. I, I he's not a bad pl- he's not a bad basketball player. There's a reason why they won the Big East. But you know, to me they're one of them teams that they don't stand out too much to me, but you know what? You know what? I've been high on this pick this whole time. No, 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 no one else would have the nuts to pick this. But you know what? I'm going with it. I'm taking Vermont over Marquette. Screw it. No one else sees it? Well, I'm going to see it. I like Vermont over Marquette. I'm going to take another 15 seed for the third consecutive year in a row to get a win over it too. Because my thought is Vermont may not be the strongest 15 seed, but – I think they've got the weakest matchup, and that's why they've got a shot. And even if Vermont doesn't win, this will at least be close, and it will be really competitive. 
But I'm excited to see how that goes. So let's go to this side now, the Midwest. Houston and Northern Kentucky. Despite the injury Houston has, this will not be very close. Give me the one seed. Iowa-Auburn. Oh, these eight nines, they can go either way. You guys may or may not believe this, but the eight, the, the nine seed actually wins more often than the eight seed does, and that's what I find interesting. Because if you look at it, seed, if you look at those seeds, the that that will always be considered an upset, but that's not exactly an upset. So I mean, I don't know. I just like Auburn. I think defense outweighs offense, and the Big Ten's been a pretty offensive conference. So. I like Auburn. I've been so talking for like 45 minutes now, so I'm going to kind of try to speed this up. And plus, I've had my own thoughts for a while now. Miami and Drake. Uh, I've heard Miami has a couple of really important big injuries. And, again, much like Tennessee, I didn't even like them before the injuries, so what makes you think I'm taking them now? And based on – the history of these tournaments, you've got to take an 11 seed. you got to take a 10. you probably got to take majority nines. And I haven't taken a 12-5 yet. This is where I'm going to take mine. At least if I had to have one, this is the one I'm very certain and sold on. I like Drake over Miami in the first round of the tournament. And in my opinion, a very fraudulent Miami because a few weeks ago I saw them blow a 25 point lead at home against Florida State which by the way they didn't win 10 games this season. That's terrible. To me that that's enough to sell me on anyone upsetting Miami. And the last time Miami was at this seed position or in a similar seed position, they got beat by a team called They got beat by a team called Loyola Chicago. Has a very similar animal as their mascot, a, 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 a coyote. Drake has a bulldog, so not much of a difference here, though, is there? Okay, Indiana, Kent State. A lot of people are high on this 413, and my opinion is that Kent State is the strongest 13. But I think in terms of talent, Indiana, I don't think Kent State has enough. I think that this will be a very interesting game. Kent State will keep it close. And this will probably come down to the wire. It may even come down to a, to a buzzer beater type shot. And that might be how Kent State wins. But my thought is that Indiana holds out in the end. They make free throws. They win. And they got Trace Jackson Davis. So give me Indiana. But Indiana, uh, before I continue, though, Indiana reminds me a lot of the 2021 Oklahoma State Cowboys where they – reminds me a lot of the 2021 Oklahoma State Cowboys where they just had one guy, which was the number one pick in the draft, Kate Cunningham, and a lot of people were high on them. And then they lost in the second round to a 12 seed, ironically. So Indiana's kind of in a very similar position. Let's move down. Like I just mentioned, I saw Pitt play tonight against Miami or not Miami, Mississippi State, and that was a really good game. Not a whole lot of points. The final score was sixty to fifty nine. I mean, that's about average scoring for a college basketball game. Um, I personally think that Iowa State is the better team, but you know what? At this time of year, you got to go eleven. You got to pick eleven sixes. I'm gonna take Pitt. Not because I like Pitt, but it, I think it has more to do with Iowa State that Pitt wins this game than it is Pitt. And Iowa State was in this exact position on the other side last year, and they won. I just tend to think, historically speaking, Iowa State plays better at a lower seed position, and this doesn't favor them at all, so I like Pitt. You guys may think that explanation was kind of stupid, but it is what it is. Xavier, Kennesaw State. I saw Kennesaw State's. In their uh, their tournament, they should have lost the Queens new. They should have lost the Queens Queens NC. Whatever their school is called, they should have lost the Queens because they they were down that whole game. They they won by a missed shot. Not only that, but they struggled in all their games in their tournament. And I think that that conference that they play in is very weak. I mean, the best team in it was Liberty, and they didn't win that by a whole lot. Liberty is good. And speaking of the NIT, they won tonight as well against Villanova. But 
Villanova wasn't very good this year, but speaking of that, that's Xavier's neck of the woods in terms of their competition. So, if I'm correct, I think Xavier. Xavier, I know they beat Villanova once at least. They might have twice, but I definitely know they did once. But that don't matter. I just, I think Kennesaw State's really weak. I don't think that they're on the same level as Xavier. And I've seen Xavier. They're big, they're physical, and they play a lot of defense. A team like Kennesaw State isn't going to be able to withstand that, and they might score 40 or 50 points in this game. So give me Xavier. But not because I like Xavier, but because that's a good matchup for them. All right, another really interesting matchup that people like. It seems to be that the 10-7 matchups are all interesting this year, but I don't seem to find that. For the most part, it seems like the 7th seed to me always comes out as more I don't know. I, I want to take the I want to take the seven seed more often than the ten. I've noticed this year. Texas A and M, Penn State, two teams that are very hot right now, but lost in their conference tournament or, or their conference championships. They both made it to the finals. The difference being Penn State lost by two. They were down by like ten late in that game, but they cut it all the way down to two, and they they missed what I think was their final shot. So. Or no, 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 they fouled and gave the ball back to Purdue, and all they had to do is basically throw it back in to win. So, that uh, that kind of ended them. Texas A and M, they were just gassed against Bama. I don't think that that had as much to do with A and M as that just did Bama. And, you know, all them games, all those high intensity games A and M was in the last few days, that it it just wore down on them over time. And it sucks for A&M because they really got screwed. I mean, the way that they played down the stretch, they should have probably been a four or a five, and they got seven. So I feel bad for them. But you know what? I feel like out of all the ten sevens, you could have gotten a better matchup here. And this really can go either way. I mean, I like coaching-wise, I like both teams. In terms of the grit, I like both teams. Defensively, I like both teams. I don't know if we. This is difficult for me because I mean, like, like I've really been leaning Penn State because of the way I saw them play Purdue. But I know that Alabama is better than Purdue, so that's where I give A and M credit. I don't think that who you played all really all the time matters that much in this tournament because you can play a bunch of teams that you know are good all year, and it don't matter. You can still lose in the tournament to St. Peter's. I don't know. I guess for that thought, I'll take Penn State. But I may change my mind because, again, I still have all of tomorrow to think about that. For now, and I've leaned Penn State all week, and I still like Penn State. So that's who I'm going to go with for now. But I might change my mind later. Texas and Colgate. My opinion, Colgate is the 15th seed I wanted to take. But the matchup does not work out well for them. The Big 12 scores a lot of points. I know Colgate can keep up with that. Their pace isn't fast enough. They're not as talented as Texas. There are just too many, too many, too many cons here that make me like Texas over Colgate. So uh, sorry not to pick your toothpaste, but Texas was a bad matchup for you. All right, Kansas Hour, no time there. One seed, simple as that. Defending national champion, they're winning that. Arkansas, Illinois. Let's see, Big Ten versus SEC. Uh, let's see. I like the physicality, the athleticism, and Eric Musselman. Give me Arkansas. St. Mary's and VCU. Before this bracket came out for the for the last week of bracketology, I did a I did a I used a simulator to do some simulations and it really liked St. Mary's. And I'll take St. Mary's here. But not exactly because I'm as high on Kool-Aid as that simulator was. For St. Mary's, but I'll take them because I like their physicality, and I think that playing Gonzaga twice to me this this year meant a lot more than playing the Atlantic Ten. So I'll give St. Mary's that. UConn Iona, you know, before I really really liked Iona for the week setting up because this was a projected matchup for a really long while now in the bracketology, and that's how it ended up going. 
But, you know, after seeing the simulations of it and the metrics of it, you know, as much as I want to pick against UConn, it just really does not bode well for Iona. And plus, they're playing this game in Albany, so it's almost like they're not really traveling very far at all to go to this game. So Sorry, the factors just point to UConn. Not to say that I like them as much as everyone else does, but I've got to take UConn in this matchup. DCU and Arizona State. All right, I'll pick, and by the way, I'll pick Arizona State. All right, as much as I love Arizona State because they're, they're, they play really well late in games, like that's how they beat Arizona, and that's basically how they got in this tournament. They're either good at staying on top of you the whole game, or when they do come from behind, they're good at beating you in the last second. And that's what I like about them. But TCU is also good at playing in those moments and stopping teams from doing that. So that's exactly where this doesn't work go well for ASU. Sorry, Sun, De- Sorry, Sun Devils, you're out. And I once made the mistake of picking you in a tournament in an 11-6, and you let me down. So... I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make that mistake again. Gonzaga and Grand Canyon. I like Gonzaga. Grand Canyon can really shoot and score, but I don't like them as much as I did Furman and against Gonzaga. I still liked Gonzaga even then, but point is if I don't like them over if I don't like Furman over Gonzaga, I don't like Grand Canyon over Gonzaga. It's as simple as that. Northwestern Boise State. For a while earlier on, when the bracketology was going on, you know, the earlier bracketology before all the conference tournaments, it liked Boise State at the C line or at the 8 9. I did like them before. But to me, Northwestern is kind of like a Cinderella story. At least of the regular season, they are a Cinderella story. And I think that continues with a win over Boise State. Again, one of them games where I might switch my mind. The only 10 7 I'm really sold on for now is Michigan State, USC. And any of these games, I could still change my mind on tomorrow because that's what I have left before the tournament. But for now, I like Northwestern. Bo Buey and all those other guys, you know, that shoot well and play good interior game. I'll take Northwestern over Boise State. And I picked my 15-2 already. I'm not I'm not I'm not picking against UCLA. Despite the injuries they have, I'm not picking them to lose in the first round there. We've done the first round. It took almost an hour. That's just, that's that's great. So that means that we're pressed for time here. All right, Alabama, West Virginia. Not, not that I have to be super quick, but I just don't want to be here talking for hours and making you guys bored to death. So I'm going to try to speed it up. Alabama, West Virginia. You know, this is an interesting matchup for Alabama. West Virginia is definitely capable of beating them. The simulator I used likes West Virginia. A lot of your experts like West Virginia. They don't like West Virginia to win, but they at least think that this is a game that West Virginia has a chance to win. I do believe that it is one, but I think Alabama is able to win it close. And again, the best team in the country and the number one overall seed for a reason. I like Bama. San Diego State, Virginia, two teams that are very similar. They both are more defensive and Slower paced teams. Team I like in this situation is Virginia, just because you know they're be- they're better at it. Virginia's had an identity like this forever now, while San Diego State. Not to say they haven't, you know, but they play in a conference where you know you score more points than than you play defense. So, and, for, and Virginia found a way to be the second best team in their conference. But yeah, the ACC is very fraudulent. It. It doesn't really matter, though. This game can honestly go either way, but I'm not a big fan of either one to move on past Alabama. So I'll just take Virginia because of the experience they have in these types of games and their uh, and their coaching scheme. NC State and Baylor. You know, I personally did not like NC State when I first thought of this matchup happening. But not only did the simulation really like them, but I realized they play really good at something that makes Baylor struggle. And that's, you know, that's outside defense. They made a, a team like Baylor, you know, with NBA talent, sure. 
you would think that easily they should be able to get past a team like NC State. But NC State really poses a huge threat there. You know, they can they can make them cold in that game. Not give up a whole lot. And, and especially if Baylor can't shoot, they're going to be – that's just not good. And plus, you know, you've got to – the trend will suggest that you've got to pick a team, at least one double-digit seed to go to the Sweet 16. I'll take one here. And, and even and even if you don't take NC State over Baylor, a lot of people like Creighton over Baylor. That's just a popular upset pick in the second round is that Baylor gets beat. So I guess I'll jump on that too, but with a different team, NC State. Missouri, Arizona. Like I said before, Arizona is Final Four material. And I'm not going to pick my team out of bias. So I, I, I'm going to... I didn't mean to click that. I mean, these metrics, they think that they suggest that this game will be pretty close, and I'm not saying it won't. But they definitely suggest Arizona will win, and I suggest Arizona will win because I I personally think they're they're good enough to go on a final four run or possibly win it all. I think this is a national championship contender, so I definitely don't think Missouri is going to be the one to knock them off. Much as they, as well as they've looked, they've been really inconsistent all year. So that's going to catch up with them in that game. Purdue and Memphis. This has been a really popular place to pick a one to lose. I don't think that the one loses here, because even though I think Memphis is very athletic and they play well enough and score enough where they can keep up with a team like Purdue. Like I said before, the factor of you know, in the first weekend they're still going to have all the momentum and. You're still not going to play anyone really that great, you know. It's like not only did they come off of a Big Ten championship victory, but they kind of got the rest. While Memphis might be kind of banged up from playing FAU because that's – I don't care if Memphis wins or not. That's going to be very, very physical and very taxing on their on their physical state. So even if Memphis – is good enough to beat Purdue, I think they're going to be too gassed, and I think that Purdue has enough to go up the middle and cause trouble for them in, the, in, in a game like that. And that's exactly where I said Zach Eady is dangerous against a team that's gassed and worn down. So I like Purdue to make it to the Sweet 16. Duke and Louisiana, as I kind of suggested before. I like Duke here. Louisiana might give them a game early, but I think Louisiana, they were lucky to get the first round matchup they did, and that's how they got here. So I like Duke. I'd probably like Duke over Tennessee even, but I think it's more likely with Louisiana, so I'll take Duke there. Kentucky, Kansas State. This is interesting because you'd think with the Blue Blood Kentucky and with their guard Oscar Shibwe that that'd be pretty easy, you know. Everybody likes him, and you think that this is an upset that you pick. Well, I say otherwise, because I don't think many people are on board with Kansas State, and I'm not really either. I remember the last two teams, these, the last time these two teams played in the tournament, Kansas State upset Kentucky, and that was the first time they ever beat them. I think Kentucky surprises people, or Kansas State surprises people again, but as the higher seed and beats Kentucky to move on to the second round. Or not, they are in the second round. To move on to the Sweet 16. All right, Michigan State, Vermont. Now, you guys would think this is a Cinderella team I like, and the answer is no. There's December, January, February, and Izzo. So, it's not one of them years like there was an Oral Roberts and St. Peter's of the past two seasons. We're not going to see that this year, I don't think. Even if a 15 seed does make it through the first round, we're not going to see that. Because I think Michigan State in the end is too much. They're too much for a team like Vermont. And Vermont, they put all their energy into that first game. So, I think Michigan State's just got them all around beat there. All right, Houston and Auburn. This is actually going to be a really, really interesting game. But I think in the end, Houston, Houston is stronger than Auburn, clearly. And they're tied for the best record in the league. That doesn't exactly matter once you play a team like Auburn. But I think that Houston's going to beat Auburn because uh, they have more offense. 
Auburn's really defensive, and so is in Houston, but Houston is more well-rounded, and they definitely play better on that side of the ball where they'll give Auburn some trouble. Not enough where it's a blowout, but enough where they can beat Auburn. So I like Houston there. All right, Drake, Indiana, as I kind of suggested before, Indiana reminds me of 2021 Oklahoma State when they had Cade Cunningham, where just because they had that one guy who was kind of a playmaker and an NBA-type star, he was going to lead them on some kind of miraculous run, or at least to the Sweet 16 and maybe lose to Illinois because Illinois was really good that year. But they ended up losing earlier than they thought to an Oregon State team that really wasn't that good. And the thing is, if Oregon State was barely any good as a 12 seed, uh, they snuck on by the Pac-12. I mean, I mean, Drake should definitely be able to win. Now that I think about it, in Indiana, you know, they're inconsistent at times too. They're like Missouri. They're inconsistent, you know. On their best day, they're really good and they can beat anybody. But on their worst day, they're capable of losing to a team like Drake. And you know what? In March, days like that happen. And you're gassed because you had to play Kent State till the very – you had to play a full 40 minutes against Kent State. And I think with Miami's injury, there's a possibility Drake might actually come out and win this bigger than we expect. They might have a comfortable lead where they can rest guys. Indiana will not have that luxury. So just for that, I like Drake. And I think they're talented, they're talented enough to match up with Indiana well. So I like Drake to be the another – double-digit seed to go to the Sweet 16. Penn State, Texas. Yeah, as much as I... I skipped this one. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, Xavier. Although, I've seen somebody take Pittsburgh because of uh, because of it being a quote-unquote conspiracy matchup because, like, they share a former player or whatever. That's not why I'm going to pick Pitt. I like 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 I said, I barely like them over Iowa State. I'm not picking them over Xavier. Even though I don't like the X, I don't think Pitt's a strong enough team to beat the X and be a Cinderella type team, so I like Xavier there to end that pretty quickly for Pitt. Penn State, they're gassed from playing A and M and I think Texas is just too talented in the end. Texas wins this game. That was pretty quick. Kansas, Arkansas. Now, I think out of any potential for a one seed to lose between Purdue, Memphis, and Kansas, Arkansas, those are probably the two most important one versus eight or nine seeds in the second round. Like I said, I like about Memphis that they're athletic and that they can score on a team like Purdue. And Purdue has only one guy, and if you find a way to to mitigate their success with getting it in the middle to him, then you're very well on your way to upsetting Purdue. On the other hand, Arkansas is bigger and more physical, and it's all, they're almost like the football team in a way. They mirror it a little bit. They're physical, they play tough, and they're going to give you a difficult matchup. So even if Kansas is the better team, they're going to struggle here, at least for a while. I think that... This isn't a great matchup for Arkansas. If they were to, my thought is that they should have gotten Houston because in that case, I love that upset. But Kansas, I can't get on board with that. I, I, I'm big on Kansas there. So defending champions, of course, it's hard to repeat, but I'll take them for the moment now. St. Mary's and UConn. Let me look at this because I really don't know who to pick here. I know a lot of people would think it's obvious that it's UConn, but I'm not gonna say that it is. I think that UConn and the whole Big East, for the most part, is pretty fraudulent. So, let's see. On the points per game, St. Mary's is clearly the better defense. Then, UConn puts up more points. But they're not as impressive as I would have thought. A lot of team like them is putting up almost 80. But yet again, they're playing the Big East, and St. Mary's plays Gonzaga twice a year. It's about all you see out of them. BPI rank, they're not too much different in that regard. Not as great of a record against the top 25, but hey, they beat Gonzaga once, so what that tells me is they had to have beaten someone else besides Gonzaga. That's really good. Wow, UConn is 3-5 and five versus the top 25, and this is a team that people like. You know what? I don't like picking 
I don't like – I don't want to pick a team like St. Mary's because I've already picked a five. I'm usually more big on the four. I don't know. I'll, I'll rock with UConn, but I think that's going to be closer than everyone expects, and I don't get the love for UConn. But for now, because they match up well enough, I think they can get to the Sweet 16. TCU and Gonzaga, I've heard that this is a sleeper matchup for potentially who could win this whole region. I don't disagree. Because I think both teams have strengths that are very Final Four, even National Championship contender-like. My thought is I'll take Gonzaga because they've been here a lot more. I like both of the coaches. I like both of the squads. This is going to be a really good one. Bring your popcorn to that. But I like Gonzaga just because of their experience. And plus, they're likely pissed about last year. So they're going to bring motivation. All TCU, you can argue, is. But I don't know if they're ever a team that's really ever going to take a step forward or take too much of a step forward from where they were at last year. So for that, I like Gonzaga. But TCU is capable. So I so for that, I say watch out. Northwestern, UCLA. You know, as much as I said that I thought earlier in the season that Northwestern would be a Cinderella, and, and what other perfect way to pull that off than to play an injured UCLA? Well, I still think UCLA injured is good enough to beat Northwestern because even without their guards, they're still really talented with with Jaime Jaquez and Tiger Campbell. Those guys are workhorses for that team, so... Despite not having their guards, I still think that they're going to pose a threat to Northwestern. They're going to handle that easily. All right, Purdue, Duke. All right, Duke is a hot blue blood. Even though that they've had some easy, even though they've had it easier than Purdue has, both teams are going to be rested here. But like I said, this is where it could hurt Purdue. That they're one-dimensional. This is the point in the tournament where that gets tough for a team like them. So for that, I like, I like Duke here. I I didn't want to spoil that pick before I said it, but I like Duke. All right, Kansas State, Michigan. Michigan. Kansas State, Michigan State. As I said before, I don't like Kansas State, and I've been in love with Michigan State since probably early February. And that was before their favorite month. So for that, I like Michigan State. Kansas and UConn. You know, a lot of people on board with this upset. I am not, because as it just showed, UConn's 3-5 and five against, I didn't even know they were that bad. Now you can argue because they've played that many teams and they've been battle-tested that that makes them good in a matchup like this, but you're playing the defending champion, and I don't think you're nearly as talented as they are, so no, you're not winning this game. I'm sorry to tell all of you Big East fans and UConn fans, but you're not winning this game, and if, and if you do then I owe all of you a big fat apology, and I'll do it in two weeks after you've played and gotten through the Sweet 16. I will apologize to every UConn fan that's out there. If UConn makes it past the Sweet 16, I will apologize to every single one of you. But right now, I'm not buying it. And this, for UCLA, is a matchup where I do think that injuries are going to catch up with them because they're going to play a very fast-paced and high-scoring Gonzaga team. So they're not going to let off the brakes at all, and UCLA knows they're going to have to score 90 points at least to beat them. I don't like you in that matchup where you don't have your guards. That's going to hurt you so much against Gonzaga. So I like them to beat UCLA. I was going to scroll up here and do these other Sweet 16s and Elite 80s, but I might as well finish this up to the final four so let's see duke michigan state so that's probably not what people were expecting they were expecting this they were expecting this team to get there you guys are probably shocked that i don't even have them winning a game in the tournament that's what marquette is known for and i like to go by a program's history because that usually repeats itself 
And that's my thought on Marquette, is they're going to find their way out of it because, you know, that's what Marquette's known for, getting upset. But even if, even if Marquette advances to the second round, I think Michigan State beats them too, so it doesn't really matter for me, to me who it is. I think Michigan State will still end up here because I like their matchups, unless they play Kentucky. In the case that they get Kentucky, I probably like Kentucky, but I still think that that's close. But I'm going to go with Michigan State to play Duke. And honestly, they're both on fire at this point because Michigan State has won three straight tournament games despite having a cold Big Ten start in their tournament, not even winning a game in that tournament. But Duke, on the other hand, at this point, will have 12 consecutive wins. So they're hot too. You know what? Give me the higher-seeded team. Give me the higher-seeded team. As much as I wanted to pick Michigan State, I've got to take Duke. And a lot of people love them right now because they're hot. You know what? I'll say I do too. I'll take Duke to be Michigan State. Kansas-Gonzaga. Let's see how this matches up. Let's see. Points per game. Gonzaga averages about five more, but that ain't too bad, really. Here's the top 25. They both have a 500 record. BPI ranked. They're back to back with each other, so that's yeah, this should be really good. Conference, not too big of a difference. And points per game, Gonzaga kills Kansas. So you know what? That stat line I just saw, points or opponent points per game, made me feel a lot better about picking Gonzaga. Because that's exactly who I want to pick. So I'm not very high on any of these one seats. The one seat I like the best is probably Alabama. And I think that drama is going to catch up with them eventually too. So I'm not too big on any of the one seeds in this whole tournament. But, yeah, I think Kansas can at least get to the Elite Eight before they're out against uh, the good old Bulldogs, which they're back in the Final Four for the first time since they went all the way to the national title. Should be – shall to be interesting. All right, Alabama-Virginia, as I just said. Alabama, best team in college basketball right now. Virginia, on the other hand, they, they, they can compete with Alabama. They've definitely got – the pieces defensively to play their best in that game and hold Alabama low. I don't I don't see them beating Bama though. I, I was, at that point I was just trying to advocate for Virginia where you can't really do it. I like Alabama to advance. NC State Arizona this is where a lot of people would think that um NC State goes on some kind of Cinderella run. And no, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Like I said, Arizona, Final Four caliber team. That's really been my reasoning for picking them up to this point. I like Zona here. And then even though you have a you have a little bit of a uh, a little bit of chaos here with NC State and West Virginia, ultimately it ends up shaping the form with Alabama and Arizona. So Houston and Drake. This is interesting to me because before I was just easily going to go with Houston because, you know, another fact I came to find out is that a 12 seed has never beat a one. So that was almost wanting me to, wanting to make me pick the one seed to win. But I just realized something. If the 16 seed can beat the one, why can't the 12? And my thought is that Drake is a really good 12 seed. And despite having some weak losses and early blowouts, they were early for a reason. Drake has been really good down the stretch. In the, in the latter part of the season. And they've they've been shooting well, and they've been playing, you know, they've been playing situational defense that's been helping them win these these important big-time games, like when they beat Bradley in their conference tournament. You would have thought Bradley was going to win it all along just because they were the one seed, and they were kind of the monopoly of that conference. But, well, not really, because, I mean... It's really just been back and forth in recent years because the Missouri Valley's had a few different teams come out of there. But, I mean, you would think with Bradley being what they were this year that they were easily in. But Drake ends up showing. They're, they're, they, they remind me a little bit of Charleston. They're the team that showed up early, disappeared for a bit, and came back. And, you know, that's the type of team they are. And I think not only having some favorable matchups in the first weekend helped them, but like I said, I think Houston's weak. And as much as I think I should pick them to go to the Elite Eight, I'm pulling 
for a double-digit seed in the Elite Eight. Give me Drake. I might be on some kind of Kool-Aid or crack or whatever you guys think I'm on, but I like Drake in this matchup. I may eat my words later, but I like Drake. And then you've got three and two in Xavier in Texas. Like I said, I didn't even like Xavier. I'm not huge on Texas either, but I think Texas played in a really good conference as opposed to Xavier, fraudulent conference, and they struggled a lot. Heck, they barely beat DePaul in the first round of the tournament when they played in it. Of course, they ended up making the championship game, but that don't matter when the, when the entire conference is fraudulent anyway. Kind of like Duke, but heck, I think Duke, Duke to me is just on another level, and I try not to be conference biased. On the other hand, I just – at C-Line Xavier's at – I have trouble even thinking that they're going to go to the Sweet 16. So, there's no way they're beating Texas. Even without Shaka Smart, they're not beating Texas. All right, so you've got Alabama and Arizona. Interesting, because like I said, I and honestly, because of what I've said this whole time about Arizona, that means that Alabama and Arizona are very much both – Final Four and National Title Contenders. In fact, if you're in this game at this point, I think you're a National Title Contender, period. Even a team like Drake, who's a 12 seed, you're you're a contender if you make it this deep in this in the tournament, because you're playing on the second Friday. You're playing on the second Saturday and Sunday. Which, if you make it through this, you're going to be put in the best possible position to win a national title. So, I really like that for any team who wins. And honestly, both of these teams are going to be ready because I think that they both had favorable matchups. And because I don't like number one overall seeds of the past, you know what? Give me Zona. As much as I wanted to take Alabama, I cannot take Alabama. I just do not like the one seeds this year. In my personal opinion, the one seed with the best chance of getting to the of getting to the Final Four would be Kansas and their repeats of last year. Just I, that's interesting. Okay, you know what? Now, now, the more I talk about it, <laughs> I'm picking Bama. I just don't feel super confident in not picking a one seed to get here. I just I'm just not confident. In it. I'm not confident in not picking a one seed to get here. So in that case, I've got to pick Bama to win. Now I don't like Bama. Now I'm back and forth on this game. The thing is, I probably will tomorrow too because I'm not super confident. I don't like one seeds because of the way Virginia treated me. Or number one overall seeds. But then I don't like the idea of no one seed getting to the final four because I don't know how long that's happening. And I'll look that up later, but that just that idea doesn't give me a good feeling at all. So yeah, for now, for now I'll roll with Zona, but I might change that later. And I like Texas as as much as I've liked Drake up to this point. It's eventually going to catch up to you. The fact that you know you've had to play all these difficult matchups and you're a mid major. That's all going to catch up with you. No offense to Drake, but they're not winning the championship. Even though what I just said contradicted that, I don't see them winning it. But they are a good Cinderella team in my opinion. Now, that being said, you've got Arizona and Duke and Texas Gonzaga in the Final Four. Intriguing to me. Realistically, I think this is realistic. I think any of these four teams could win it. I've just decided to go with Alabama again. Because, again, I'm not super confident and no one see getting there. So, as long as there's at least one, I feel good. Duke is like Virginia of 2019. Not Virginia, I lied. They're like Auburn. Auburn played Virginia and almost won, but they didn't. They played really well and got hot at the right time, beat some really good teams to get here, and they're going to give it all they have. And you know what? Just because Duke's a blue blood, you know what? I'll give them this nod. I don't know if a five seed has ever been to the championship, but I do know that one has never won it. A five has never won the championship. They may have been to one, but if they never have been to one either, 
they will be the first one. Just because, you know, you can't dislike Duke as a, as a program, and they were in the Final Four last year. So it would be crazy that in John Shire's first year, he takes them to the national title. That would be really crazy. And they'd be the Cinderella story this season. So the last few years will go to show that, well, not 21. There were two one. The best two teams were in that one. But last year was a testament that you can definitely have a Cinderella-type team like a Duke. So, yeah, yeah, I like Duke. Before, before I get too jumbled in my words, I like Duke. Texas and Gonzaga, you know, I've liked this matchup for a while now. Because I think these two teams match up very well with each other. And if I'm correct, I think they played earlier in the season. And I think that Texas won, if I'm correct. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but, yeah, I'm pretty sure Texas won. And... Yeah, I'm pretty sure Texas won, and um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Let's look at this matchup here. All right, opponents, points per game. Yep, see all that. I mean, in terms of Gonzaga, they're just – they score a lot. Let's just say that. They score. Like it says, they average almost 90 points a game. That's a dangerous team right there. I think it's going to catch up with you where you don't play defense. And Texas, with the conference they're in, they've played really well, well-rounded well ball all year. And as much as I feel like they're a Tennessee-type team where I don't trust them to win here, you know, this just feels like it's their year. Texas has to be a popular pick right now because a lot of the one seeds are not liked. And there's a lot of problems with all the one seeds. And Texas just has a great draw here. I don't know how you cannot like Texas. I mean, Gonzaga's a tough matchup, but but Gonzaga's never won a national title, and that usually catches up with a team like them. So you know what? I like Texas here. And I don't know how I feel about picking a five because a five has never won at all, but this would be a heck of a run for a team like Duke if they made it. So interesting. Let's pick the score here. Well, first off, let's pick a game. Since the five seed has never won, I'm not taking a chance on that happening. I like Texas. But now I'm going to pick a final score. Let me pull out a number generator here. Because I'm not good at exactly simulating that in my head. So the loser, Duke, 58. All right, we're just going to say for the hypothetical of it, 74. I might change my mind. Actually, hold on. Hold on. Both these teams are going to score. I'm going to say 76, 77. I, I literally think it'll be that close. If these two teams play, it will be that close. We see a score like that. So, yeah, there we go. I'm not super confident that I like Texas, but as of now, I like Texas to win it. I think they have the best matchups, the best road, and they've played enough. They're battle-tested enough where if they play somebody tough, they're ready, and it just seems like their destiny. So... I'll, uh, I'm not saying the horns are back. I'm not saying that, but they might win this year's uh, tournament just because of the matchups they have. So good, good for you, Texas. But yeah, now I'm going to show you guys that simulation bracket I have. So see, this is how it all went. The simulator was very high on West Virginia, clearly. It liked Virginia and San Diego State just like I do. It liked NC State 
to go to the Sweet 16, but it, it really was on the juice for Utah State. Really on the juice. Yeah, see, it liked them and so much. They had them going to the national title. And the final score of that game was 75-53. Which I think is a realistic score if they play a team like Utah State in the championship. But they're, if they make it, they're not going to play Utah State. <laughs> Let's face it. They, the simulator was on Kool-Aid for that team. And the simulator also really liked Drake. And that's how I got on board with Drake. Because, you know... A double-digit seed usually will go on a run like this. At least one of them will, and I can definitely see that for Drake. The only difference I have is that I think they play Houston and not Auburn. Yeah, I really like the Bulldogs. Let's see, of course, they are big on UConn, but who hasn't been? Because it seems like UConn is just the team of destiny. And everyone seems to love the Big East. But see, uh, mentioning the Big East, so the best team in the Big East didn't make it past the second round. Because even though I said I like Michigan State, the simulator did too. It also really liked Memphis and Oral Roberts because it had Oral Roberts beating Duke and Louisiana. And my thoughts on Oral Roberts is I think they can do the exact same thing as Drake, go to the Elite Eight, if they can beat – Duke, I think they're that good where they can do that if they beat Duke. But the only thing is I'm not confident in that. Duke's really good right now. I know they're not like Zion Williamson-esque time good, but they're still really hot. And it's one of them things, you know, this matchup, it's iffy, you know. It's not one you're too confident in picking, but you know whoever wins it will probably go on a run. And I'm just saying for now that'll be Duke. In fact, I like them in the national title. Again, I might change my mind on that, too, because I always do, but you never know. Yeah, I thought this part of the bracket was more interesting. This was a little more tame. There weren't too many upsets here. I mean, this was a little crazy. I don't think there's anyone totally shocked that Kentucky ended up winning this. I think all of us know that if there's any outside chance of a team winning that that region, it would probably be Kentucky or Michigan State, so... Very interesting. But, yeah, I've been going on for the last hour and a half now. I spent a lot of time on the first round, so that's why it took me forever to get through this. But just know that you got some detailed content here. And I'm not slacking because, again, I don't I don't want to be completely boring and just miss out on all the key parts of what really makes it important when you make these picks. Because some people will just go in and pick random brackets or whatever. Like, people who aren't basketball fans. And I get it. You don't know basketball. So, you're not going to go by statistics or by the eye test as much as you are random things or just some, like, luck charms that you have because you don't know the sport. And that's fine. I mean, that's what I think is beautiful about March Madness is that you don't even have to be someone who's very knowledgeable about it. And you can still... You, you can still do really well because that's just how it goes. Like, point is, it doesn't matter what amount of basketball knowledge that you have, crazy things are going to happen. And it's however you kind of see it playing out or what factors you think might play into it that really determine that all in your own head. And, you know, whatever that leads you to, I, I, I for anyone who thinks that, you know, whatever they think is what team should get in and win it all, you know. It, that, that's the beautiful thing about it. And that's why I think it's the best time of year because you will not see as much chaos in any other sport than you will in NCAA March Madness. Craziest time of year for a sports fan and the best time of year. That's coming from a mostly football guy like myself. I mean, that time of year is exciting too, like when the bowl games and everything come out. And But I'm usually disappointed because it's never as exciting the playoffs are because you only got four teams and then – you know, all the arguments, you know, like a lot of the time record and record and what's on paper end up tending to matter more than like, you know, what the hypotheticals or the possibilities of an upset really mean. It's like Alabama is a two-loss team this year in football, you know. If you put them in the playoff, you know, you almost wonder could they have found a way to win it all even though they've struggled all year because they're Alabama. 
those are the things. But yeah, people don't like blue bloods in football, and they'd rather wish them out. So, I I totally get that. That's why that tournament's not as good as March Madness. But again, I like the sport of football too, and it's really fun to watch, and it's easy to watch because there aren't as many games or time slots to keep up with like there is for basketball throughout the season. That's why it's hard to watch and really for anyone to be super knowledgeable about it unless you do unless you watch it all the time, you get paid for it cuz it's hard to keep up with on your own time when there's like a game every other day. Well, as in football, you know, you have one every week and it's kind of set up where you know anybody can watch it. So that's why I think I like football better, but Basketball was like my first true passion as a child, so that's why I'm never going to hate basketball, and I'm always going to love March Madness in this time of year. So yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. I'm not going to do a full-on outro because I've done a lot of talking already for the last hour and a half. I hope that you guys have a great night, and um, if you want to make a pick uh, for March Madness or whatever, I guess I'll leave the bracket challenge in the link in the description below. You only have one day at this point to fill out your bracket, but That'll be all for me. Signing out, guys. Peace.